Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to join us today live from our studio here at Koko Mlemle in Accra. We're live on DSTV channel 421, Go TV channel 144. Now, happening now is the finance minister is about to address uh, the nation on uh, aftermath of the domestic debt exchange program. We're taking you live to the ministry for us to take this. So, be with us here. that it was uh, voluntary, as, as you know, uh, which meant, therefore, that there was no um, misunderstanding in a sense that the state was looking to take anyone's money from them compulsively. So that, whether retiree or non-retiree, um, uh, and so I, I think we all need to get that clear, that the debt exchange program was never coercive um, and always remained voluntary for people um, to make their decisions uh, whether to join the program or not. Um, uh, we then, as you know, um, went on to offer um, an alternative um, that one was free to choose. And if you look at um, the resolutions we came to, um, senior citizens and retirees then were offered um, uh, the best status in, in the agreement. Uh, and that option, as you know, Doc, um, was to say that when we looked at the analysis um, it was clear that about 80% um, of the holdings for senior citizens um, had maturities beyond four years. Um, and so in bringing it down to five years to reduce the maturity from the original 12 that we had talked about and your own holdings, um, we thought it brings, you know, um, the the value um, of securing your principal a lot earlier, which is always good for, for everyone. Um, so that was a clear indication of that. But also uh, in the event of a successful um, debt offering which has occurred, it means that there will be very little of that paper in the marketplace, um, which meant that in the event of an emergency, you wanted to discount it, uh, you might likely suffer the vagaries of the market. And so how do we shield against that by you getting uh, the new bonds that were in the marketplace? Uh, but then a lot of you were convinced that uh, you're going to hold to maturity. And therefore, if you are holding to maturity, then there's no problem because government will pay the coupons and government will pay it at maturity. Um, what we as leaders of the society uh, needed to guard against was to let you know um, the possibilities that you may have to discount and if you did, uh, the market might not treat you right. Um, but at least on our side, um, we made it voluntary to ensure that um, your contract um, was not jeopardized, and then thought through about um, the secondary market in the event that you have to, in emergency, um, discount that your paper will be very little in the marketplace and therefore may be subject to a harsher treatment of government. But that, uh, Doc, you know that. Um, so now that we are all clear on that, and you have decided mostly not to, um, not to take that paper, um, I think it's good. I think for those um, retirees um, who took it, um, uh, I think they did, they did a good thing. Uh, but then they know that maybe they were not going to hold to maturity or they were more um, sensitive to the potential for an emergency, so they made that decision. Um, so we are, we are pleased that at least everybody had full information in taking the, the, the position that they took. And, and we really um, want to also um, thank those who tended 
and there are all bonds for new ones that um, they've joined a wider secondary, secondary market circulation, uh, which will hold them in good set in the event of, um, of an emergency that they will have to cash their bonds. Um, but um, I think it's um, an unfortunate that um, we had to have um, um, retirees picketing um, really in a situation where uh, ultimately um, it was um, a matter of personal choice um, um, to do and it was voluntary and not, not coercive. Um, so, Doc, but um, I, I want to thank you um, for, for the engagement over this period um, and we come in at the close of, of the debt exchange program um, to us sitting together um, hoping that we'll continue to get your, your good advice going forward um, help with the stability, peace uh, and prosperity of the nation. These are very difficult times um, and I think we all have to find a way uh, to participate in re-anchoring um, our, our country to go forward. Um, so a big thank you to you and Reverend um, Joseph Sutherland um, for coming to, to thank us um, for, um, for what we were able um, to do and um, I am I'm really secure uh, in the knowledge that things will get better and uh, let's all work together. Uh, appreciate um, where we have come to. There will always be differences in appreciation of every any policy and people will take um, different views about it but in the end uh, once um, we understand why we have made certain decisions and go forward I think we will continue to get this country um, on the right course sooner than later. Um, so thank you again uh, for that. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, so that brings us to the end of today's meeting, and we will wrap up as we began with a word of prayer. So that was the finance minister in that meeting with pensioner bondholders, uh, an update from what happened in parliament yesterday. Now moving on to other stories, three drivers transporting pepper and tomato from the Boko municipality to Accra have reportedly been shot dead with several others sustaining injuries after unknown gunmen opened fire on the cargo at a spot 20 kilometers from the conflict within town. Some of the injured are receiving treatment at the Kumfuanochi Teaching Hospital some survivors of the shooting which occurred on Tuesday have been showing our news team their bullet trading vehicles and recounting their ordeal to love news. Love FM's Nana Bwachi Yadom has more in the following report. These cargo vehicles, one driven from the scene of the shooting in Boko to Akomadan and Swami in Kumase, bear evidence of what took place on Tuesday. Bullet holes on the windscreen, side and rear of vehicles show aggressive spontaneous shooting. Kweku Kao, 44, is driver of this cargo truck, parked at a Kumadan. He survived the assault but lost his son, 22-year-old Kofi Kao, to the massacre. He narrates how the two of them lay on their side on the floor of the vehicle in an attempt to escape the rain of bullets vehicle in an attempt to escape the rain of bullets. Yakubu Asiripi is one of the owner of the cargo trucks that were attacked. The incident has since got him scared. Cat near four. Attacker four no. Omosaso. Aomoba. I am a mechanic. 
tika ana SF bako ana Runo bako ana next scania ana nanka ya laska nti omo banana da beninu ya we laska ni di toss fi e be twemu ata twemu wi e na aka we mu no ana boys ni patare mu kura ma singam ni bi ana mo tie si mu so ana mo bulete ka na saka no mo me ka no kura mo bulete mu sa ko pe mse driver ni ni jina fa ko se no mo bulete sa ko pe mse mo ti se kan mu ye din a obi an ka no ho bi mu no asa na ma gya sa ko ni next car ene so na di odi ka di toss field ko ene on de onya no ho tri mu e di di mu na je se ata tri car se no na mo nya problem ti ye si ye no eh me me de ne ba ka men sem wa ha ba o ma da ka se de me nim so so condition ye se tie so this vehicle here is among the four vehicles exporting pepper and cabbage from boko to accra unfortunately we can count multiple bullet holes from this particular vehicle from the door handle to the wind screen the alleged incident happened at Boko. The car had three people in it, a driver and then two passengers. Unfortunately, the driver could not make it. But the two other passengers are receiving treatment at the Konfanoche Teaching Hospital. Haruna Issa sustained multiple gunshot wounds from the incident. Tuesday in the call, Boko said that could do cabbage and green pepper. The call was that they didn't even say that they were going to grow. And <laughs> No must move it back to a yard more near Sambe Shaker. Maybe we need to or Mr. Black Black or move free in maybe a chill, maybe a chess sequence. I'm not moved sequence when I must say you should too. Your car and went to almost two year car and I come and say that time. No, yeah, me never must have that can be a dark and move to your car and say, Can we a dinner second car? No, a move we are moves and light air away mirror. No, no, Mosin Jay Horn. So Moses Ademina is a victim of the alleged clash. He has since been admitted at the Confanoche Accident and Emergency Unit. Doctors say his condition is quite critical, but he's been responding to treatment. For security reasons, we are unable to speak to him. For Joy News, Nana Boache Dankwa Yadrum, reporting. Meanwhile, 23 people, including 12-year-old, have been killed in the Boko clashes between January 31 and February 10 this year. That's according to the West African Network for Peace Building. The network in Eboko Situation Tracking Report is warning the conflict is providing opportunities for extremist and terrorist infiltration into Ghana starting from Boko. This, according to them, could result in intense cross-border violence by the extremist between Burkina Faso and Ghana's northern borders. Here is one of national coordinator, Albert Yeliang, on details of the report with my he, he, he was speaking with my colleague Aisha Ibrahim earlier on his desk. Boko is becoming a zone that, um, if you want to describe it, is becoming militarized in a way. And so there are um, targeted attacks, you know, on the fields. I mean, on the farms, uh, on the roads, you know, and around the houses. And some of the times, if there are firings, gun fires, you know, on one location, the following day or almost the same day, you would hear gun fires from, from another side. You know, so it's like almost many people are armed in a way, you know, and so they, they are targeted attacks also. So military uh, criminality is taking place besides probably just the conflict uh, parties uh, who sometimes would have reasons to engage, however that may be. You know, so there are several reasons that are making people to engage in this, you know. So we need to go deeper to, to be able to determine whether there are criminal elements already on the ground and where they are coming from, who is supporting their activities, you know, who is making them excited and reason, you know, to engage in those actions that then are not telling well on the peaceful cohesions of the communities that are various efforts are being deployed.
to, 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 to bring about. Now, the Upper West Regional Minister, Dr. Hafiz Bin Saleh, says the Regional Security Council will not look on for the security of the region to be compromised. He says that the, they are neither interested in their chieftaincy nor land, but rather the accelerated development of the region, addressing chiefs and people of the Pulima traditional area following renewed tension in the area over disputed farm land. The minister said that uh, he wouldn't allow any individual or group of persons to hold the region to ransom. Join us as Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafiq Salam report from Pulima. One major concern of the people of the Upper West Region, particularly the Cecil Enclave, is the Wahentumu Highway. It is the country's third most important highway, but has never been given the needed attention. It is bumpy, deplorable, and could be mistaken for a rice muddy pitch during the rainy season. The 75 kilometer project is always awarded piecemeal, and its construction is as old as the Fourth Republic. It has featured regularly in every government's budget that has ruled this country since the beginning of the Fourth Republic, and yet less than 53 kilometers of the entire 143 kilometer stretch is covered with bitumen. For us to get to the point that we are now was not a child's play. We had to meet all those who call the shots in this country for the contract to be awarded. As you may all know, the entire stretch was awarded to one contractor, Greenhouse, but at a point in time, I had to advise the Minister for Roads and Highways for that contract to be terminated and awarded to five different contractors. And the rationale is for the quick execution of the project. Despite the spirited effort put up by government to construct the remaining 75 kilometers, the lives of workers of one of the five contractors taxed by the government to execute the project are threatened over a disputed parcel of farmland used as a gravel pit, forcing them to temporarily hold the project for almost three weeks. Prior to the stoppage, there was confusion in the Pulmo community following the firing of guns by one of the feudum factions. Ali Usalev Uidrisu is the project manager of Ascal Investment Limited. We were at the side there and then the community, the youth, they mobilized and then they came, said they are coming to guide us so that nobody can come and sack us from the, the, the pits. So we were there and then they called one of the community members that they had a gunshot in the community. So the, those guys, they all rushed to the town. Then I told my people that then we have to stop working. Dr. Binsali was not happy with the development. Paramount chief of the Puluma traditional area, Kuro Osman Diwe Nangpa, appealed to the Rexec to find an amicable settlement to the issue. Get us a resolution that will let the road project progress, that will let peace prevail, and that will lead to development of the Sisala land. Beneath the sleeves of the regional minister were the following stringent measures which he quickly rolled over. Any disturbances that, is, that takes place in this community, those 10 people will be picked from this, this side and the other side. We are not going to compromise on the security of this region. Now, the University of Ghana Management says its new residential policy is to help minimize the rate of student vandalism on the university campus. According to the Pro Vice Chancellor in charge of student affairs, Professor Gordon Awandari, student clashes have been an issue of the university for ages and they are determined to deal with it, starting with the new policy. I spoke to the head of the school communications, Professor Abena Enimwaya Boa Benning, and the university's registrar after the news briefing. It's actually a progressive policy. With this year, we are only piloting it with Sabah Hall and um, uh, Commonwealth Hall. Progressively, up till 2025, the plan is to make all the traditional halls, Mensa Sabah, Legon Hall, Ekuafu Hall, Commonwealth Hall, uh, Volta Hall, 
all these five traditional halls of the university would be reserved for only level 100 admissions so that it helps us address that perennial problem we have every year as fresh students come in they come stranded they don't have accommodation they don't know what to do and they don't know the system and so they become susceptible to scammers who are all over the place and trying to dupe unsuspecting uh, students and parents so it has those two purposes in mind uh, in terms of whether it is enough to address the clashes that were occurring on campus we think it will do some it may not solve everything, but part of the strategy when we reassigned the students to the UGEL halls, and again, actually, let me also take opportunity and emphasize that no legitimate student of Commonwealth or male student of Sabah who was moved from these two sites was denied accommodation. All of them were placed. If today they are struggling with getting that room, it is because they've gone to occupy the space by the deadline we gave for them to pay their fees for the rooms, 10th February, they hadn't done that. And so then the university needs money to run. I'd like to reiterate that the new accommodation arrangements are in the interest of all junior members of the university as the repeated acts of violence pose a great challenge to creating an enabling environment to support teaching and learning. These arrangements are also part of efforts to offer more residential places to our level 100 students and progressively all the traditional halls, that is Mensa Saba, Commonwealth, Volta, Lagon and Equafo halls will be reserved for level 100 students and graduate students only culminating into a full in-out-out-out policy by the 2025-2026 academic year. The new accommodation arrangements have led to a number of court cases, including injunctions against the continuation of the implementation of the new residential arrangements. Yesterday, the university issued a news release which clearly provides an update on the situation. As a law-abiding institution, we are guided by a legal team in all our actions in this regard. Now, 1,335 candidates have been successfully placed in their choices of schools at the ongoing self-placement exercise under the computerized school selection placement system. Hundreds since yesterday have thronged the center to secure placement to various choices of schools after the system failed to automatically place them. My colleague Mapito CBD uh, was at the center and spoke to parent student coordinators at the center. Well, the fact that we had a quite a number of people around because um, you know we gave a day for reopen which supposed to be which is supposed to be Monday, which is 20th of January, uh, February. So people think maybe uh, Monday is the last day and it's admission. They have to go to school and that kind of stuff. But I want to uh, tell the general public that Monday is not the actual, it's the day for reopening, but uh, we will begin the ad admission processes, uh, orientation, registration, and the rest. So instruction will begin on 27th. Even if your, your issue is not resolved, we have the off next week, we'll be here for six weeks, and when you come here, we will make sure that we resolve all their issues for them. So, have you encountered any challenges and what were those challenges? Yeah, some have uh, gotten school, they want to change, others to have change of uh, program, others to like from day to boarding, but we will look at the distance and if it's okay that we have to change it for you, we do that for you. And then you'll be doing this for how long? Six weeks, we'll be here for six weeks. Six weeks. Yes. So, if someone came yesterday, uh, when will they get their placement? No, those who came here yesterday, all their issues have been resolved. Because yesterday, like, we, we, we come in the morning, we have some of the staff, they come in the morning and they will pick issues and take it to our solution center for them to resolve. So, I can see, uh, stay, state on authority that all the issues that came here yesterday, majority of them have been resolved. I want to change the school for my son because uh, the school, I'm not around, I'll cry here. Okay. Uh -huh.
I'm now I'm stay at uh, Zoom. Krabwa Kota. Which school did you get, and which school do you want to change? I get uh, at uh, Kaneshi. Yes, by it's a uh, day. Okay. By I'm not around here, so I want to come and change it. So which school do you want? Okay, the school I want to do. My son will tell you because me I want a uh, body school. Maybe every uh, presec or kofodia sectek. Uh -huh. That's one. Yeah. If I get the body, I will. And then Kaneshi was what choice was Kaneshi for you? Okay, follow the. General arts. Okay. So your first first choice was Kofreda, and you didn't get your your first yes. choice. Yeah. You only got the sixth one, which is uh, Kaneshi. Okay. Ah uh, yeah. And then which course does you want to study? What? What course? Uh, general arts. General arts. All right. And then what aggregates? You get twenty. My word was not placed at all. Your word was not placed at all. Yes. yes. Okay. So where would you like her to be placed? Pade. So which school are you looking at? What are your first three choices? Um, with Aggregate he got, I'm yet choosing the grade C schools. Okay. Yes, so that's the only thing. There's no problem. Yes. Okay. So is that that we've been giving the information on what to do with each person's challenge. So I think it's, it's fine. This time around it's fine. We only came to change the residency. Yeah, but you got the right school that you wanted. You got the school that you wanted. Yeah. So what is the problem with the residency? I wanted boarding, but I was given a day, so I only came to change it. Okay, so you wanted from day to board to boarding, yeah. And then which school is this? Saint Francis. Or that. Let's just stay with education because the fate of over 400 pupils at the Timothy Massey RC Primary and Junior High School in the Fijakwabre South District hang in the balance as they learn under loose and dilapidated structures. Concerned parents and residents fear for the lives of learners and teachers as the structures show signs of giving up. The school also lacks basic steady resources which is affecting teaching and learning. Love FM's uh, Clinton Yebua was there and as part of this report. <laughs> The Etimeti Masi RC Primary and Junior High School has not seen any major rehabilitation since its establishment in 1950. Broken windows hang by the tread. So this is the class 4A block. It was constructed to accommodate the surplus intakes. Unfortunately, squeaking doors with loose hinges and bolt locks give intruders unfettered access to the classrooms. The old, weak and cracked blocks yearn for renovation. A closer look at the window frames reveals rusted welded metal wires exposing their sharp teeth. Parts of the aluminium roofing sheets are rusting away. Meanwhile, their remains hang loosely on tiny erected concrete pillars. The plight of students at Etimetimase RC Primary and GHS is worsened when it rains. Class sessions end unexpectedly whenever the cloud gather. exercise <laughs> Aside from its dilapidating state, the school, serving over 400 pupils, lacks modern educational facilities and essential resources like desks and textbooks. Sanitary conditions at the school is an eyesore. It will be very difficult to get close to the toilet facility behind me, considering how dilapidated it is and how unhygienic it is. Unfortunately, the facility has been hijacked by residents here and criminals have also inhabited the place. If you fall out of the your toilet, no, Afa, say, be a, a ma, your teacher's phone, no, clown, power to toilet, in him, say, oh, 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 ma, oh, ma, toilet, in him, say, toilet, do, be a, chocolate, in him, coffee. 
Parents and residents are worried by the situation. Now, be bana sebe a konfoni me ni na iti mi di be be sin sin suku ni mu mu ama suku ni entumpo. Ena na na sa ya wana moto bo a kulebi. Omu pe pe rough rough. E kwa inu ana metonga de. E na be bana we across the road ni. E na be bana we afaha. School no aye da da. Oshie school na ya ohu ya. Oshie nkule guma school asubi tu ma pa ateri tam. School no aye suku atete. This is how exciting people are to study. All they seek for is a conducive environment that does not threaten their lives. Reporting for joining us, Clinton. Now, government statistician Professor Kwabena Enin has reiterated the importance to strive for a balanced growth as a country. Speaking to the income inequality report in the public sector on the AM show, Professor Enin said to achieve this, a comprehensive data on regional distribution of the public sector workers is needed. He believes this will inform government on employment and income concerns. Every country should strive for a balanced growth. What balanced growth simply means is that you make sure that Across all your administrative regions, there is some minimum level of structure systems that would propel growth. Mm. So the first question is, what minimum number do we have? And then the second question is, what other indicators should inform the number that we expect in each region? Now, following from the 2021 20, population housing census, as you rightly said, the national population was 30.8 million. Greater Accra was slightly higher than... Um, Ashanti region. So one would quickly ask that if Greater Accra had a slightly higher population than Ashanti region, why would we see the reverse when it comes to public sector em em employees? Mm. Benjamin, the question is, as a country, have we thought through, one, that minimum number that I talked about, for every state to, for every region to have in terms of public sector employees? Mm. Then we can question why Northeast is holding just about 9,000, whereas Greater Accra and um, Ashanti region are holding more than a third mm. of it. If we've not had that conversation to know the minimum number, we can't go ahead with it. So it is our expectation that government will see these numbers and then say that, okay, for each region, we need at least 10,000 people based on A, B, C, D. Then the population will come in, then the poverty situation will come in, then the development um, growth trajectory would come in to inform the maximum number that we have. Right. But unfortunately, that conversation is yet to occur. Mm. From the male-female perspective, I wouldn't worry um, so much about that because, as I said, if you are deploying that universal um, salary structure, it's independent of these demographics. Just for watching, join us today. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with business. Stay with us. Hello, good afternoon. Let's do business now with me, Beverly Broom. The senior advisor and capacity building and stakeholder engagement at the National African Continental Free Trade Area after coordination office. Jacob Jamfi Edu says some businesses are yet to fully appreciate the need for a product to be registered and certified to take advantage of the African market under the AFTA agreement. Speaking at the regional conference on the implementation of the AFTA agreement in Sunyani, Mr. Jamfi Edu urged businesses to embrace the program available to help them improve to the required standard. Precious Semevo has more. The Awareness Creation Conference for Ghana's Implementation and Policy Framework on the African Continental Free Trade Area after agreement in the Bono region is part of plans to help boost local businesses' trade in markets in Africa. The engagement, among others, was also an opportunity for stakeholders to gain a deeper understanding of the AFTA and its accompanying modalities for trading. Bono Regional Minister Justine Ausu Banahini, in her address, believes the conference will help address the challenges confronting the sector 
and enable businesses at the regional and local levels to position themselves and take advantage of the opportunities after office. It is obvious that this meeting is indeed an important step towards realizing an African without borders in terms of trade, which will in turn lead to fluid development. According to the National After Coordination Office, some businesses still fall short of product requirements for trading under the AFTA agreement. Speaking to the media, Jacob Jemfi Edo, Senior Advisor, Capacity Building and Stakeholder Engagement, National AFTA Office said they are supporting businesses to meet the standard. I think that they haven't fully understood the need for a product to be regist registered, certified, uh, to be able to be on the market. So we help them to go through the registration process to understand why it's necessary for you to register. We have set up desks in a lot of the organizations where you can, we can point you to. If you are having challenges, go to this person, go to this office, they will help you. We do profiling of the organizations, of companies, see what their problems are, what their issues are, begin to link them to where they can get support. You know, so that's what I mean by positioning. But if the first thing is you deciding that you want to be part of it, be committed to it. There will be challenges, but there are systems in place to help you. He also said measures are in place to help businesses adopt the right marketing strategy. Part of the support we are giving is to help businesses to learn how best to market. To, to market, to package properly. You, I mean, you and I know sometimes, you know, you see the packaging of some product, when you look at it, you won't look at it again. So all of that comes into the, the marketing process where you have a product packaged nicely and then you tell people about it. And that is where we start. If you can get a good base in Ghana, in marketing is outside is, is easy. This is all part of the business development process, market development process that we are working on with a number of government organizations. Precious Seme for Joy Business, Sunyai. The executive chairman of IDEC Digital, Ambrose Yana, has called on businesses and business leaders and SMEs to invest in artificial intelligence. Speaking at the launch of the IDEC AI Center of Excellence, he explained that artificial intelligence will significantly increase the efficiency and profitability of businesses. Here's more in this report. As the world of technology evolves, artificial intelligence is gradually becoming a key part of business solution process. The branch of computer science which employs smart machines and software to perform tasks which is typically performed by humans have come in handy to reduce workload and improve efficiency. In view of this, IDEC Digital has opened a modding artificial intelligence center to train entrepreneurs, MSMEs and the youth in artificial intelligence development. Speaking at the launch of the first IDEC AI Center of Excellence, Executive Director of IDEC Digital, Ambrose Yane, charged businesses to invest in artificial intelligence to improve their service delivery. Technological development has caught up with us and everybody has to move along with it, especially in the business sector, so that if businesses uh, do not move along with uh, technology such as this to aid their work, increase efficiencies and uh, productivity and profitability, uh, within a very uh, short time their businesses uh, will go underground. So it's very important that uh, executives of all uh, uh, business entities uh, buy into this and get their top brass executive trained. On his part, the president of the Institute of ICT Professionals, David Go, said the training center will afford young people the opportunity to educate themselves to fit into the ever-changing trends of the digital ecosystem. This consortium actually brings home what AI is about to help young people to get connected. Um, you have seen the AI Center of Excellence, one here at um, IDEC Plaza and then the other at Academic City University College. This is to help young people to be trained, to be equipped for the next generation of uh, technology that is coming up. Representing 7W Artificial Intelligence, 
The president of the Slovenian Ghana Business Club, Gilbert Yelueri Mezna, said Slovenia through 7W Artificial Intelligence is committed to supporting Ghana Build the required knowledge base in artificial intelligence. One of these successes has been 7W, which has decided to partner companies here in Ghana, especially IDEC, Digital, uh, Accra, Academic City, and also Institute of ICT Professionals uh, in the artificial intelligence space. The IDEC AI Center of Excellence, which is a private sector initiative to train businesses and students, is powered by a consortium of partners, namely 7W Artificial Intelligence Company Limited from Slovenia, Academic CT University College, Institute of ICT Professionals and IDEC Digital. And that's all for business. We have more business news when you log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. I am Beverly Broom. Let's discuss now on Joy News today. I am Muftar Nabila Abla Black Stars assistant coach Gigi Dramani says that the appointment of Chris Hilton is a new dimension for the leadership of the Ghana uh, Football Association. That is specifically the Black Stars. According to him, he believes that with the experience of the former Premier League manager, it will be instrumental in determining how the Black Stars will play subsequently. Building consistency and bonding. And uh, his, his, you know, he came here, he visited me here, and then I gave him audience with my staff. We had a, fortunately it fell on a Thursday, and Thursdays we have technical meeting where we extensively explore around each other. And I gave him that space, and then I gave him the space in the, in the assembly hall where, where we had a whole uh, student body, and then, and then, and then he spoke. He spoke to them. And so already this is somebody who values their grassroots. This is somebody who, who cherish um, uh, a partnership, who cherish colleagues, who cherish unionism. This is somebody who has seen it all at the top level and still says that I still learn around these people that I work with. So, so I think that the FA and then the government really, really Really are very clear in their direction towards the, 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 the development and progress of our football in terms of deliberate keeping consistency and then and then I wish they rem I will hope that they will remain patient around these processes in terms of how we want to to create success in creating success you need you need a period to do this and you need consistency and what has been created already means that the bond is, is, is there, and so this is a huge one. So Chris brings about team building, cohesion, and then, and then strong relation. Experience. And then experience, you know, at the, at the EPL level, huge experience. And that's what I said, he has, he has seen it all, but he's still very open-minded. Should, should we raise our expectations since, since his experience? No, we have, to, we have to be very modest in terms of our, our, our uh, expectations and then support and align especially uh, uh, our 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 huge industry which is the media uh, point that we need to to have a, a clear view of of how we are rolling things so that you'll be able to see that okay this is where we are this is where we are going uh, we want to go but these are the things that we need to be doing and the good thing is that we have a strong database and that's why when i was talking about the the John Pinsel issue. I was saying that some players you need them now. Some players you need meet them in the medium phase. Some players you need need them in the longer term. 
and in the, in the process of team building. That's, that's how it's going to be. Some are going to be falling off. Some will fall off so early. But others are the ones that you are carrying for, for longer periods. So how do you do to be able to have them consistently be part of it? And it's about having at least a collection of 50 to 55 players where you know that always the resolving is going to come out from this group. And once you so have that one, then you are building a strong team. So from team. the team we took to the World Cup, um, what percentage of, this, of that team do you think we should maintain? Uh, absolutely, the, 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 the squad was still, is still alive. And then the squad is, is what we, you have to be looking at, uh, how the leagues are, are going on now. And then, and then those who are on the pitch, and uh, if you are talking about those to maintain, if the person is injured, as we know from a... Daniel Daniel uh, da Daniel Chere yeah, being injured. Yeah, injured. If the person is injured, absolutely he's out. No, but I mean, because you just need five days to play. Should we keep games. 70 percent, 80 percent, 90 percent? I think that 50? I think that the core of the team is still the base. First round, for we do have more sports stories on my joyonline.com. We appreciate your company. Up next is world news. <laughs> Good afternoon, welcome to Showbiz here on Joy News. So then our Ghanaian legendary musician, um, uh, music duo Keche, uh, in, an, in an all in, uh, new, they are out with an all new video, Something Must Happen, uh, the duo in an interview on Joy Prime told Rosalind this morning uh, that uh, all that went into shooting this particular movie. Meanwhile, gospel musician Diana Hamilton has been sharing with us what goes into her stage performances. The Adum hitmaker reveals she gets stage fights sometimes. All the time? All the time. Really? Is it before yeah. or throughout? Not through. Not while I'm on stage. When I'm on stage, Ebony de Sayaba. But before you get there. On, oh gosh. My husband says I shouldn't say I'm anxious <laughs> or I'm nervous. So these days I don't say it, but <laughs> yeah. I think I think it's just um, it's part of it. It's, so it's my case, adrenaline. What what goes into preparation before touching the mic? Before touching the mic, I'm that's praying. backstage. Backstage, I'm getting ready. Um, in the past, when I used to dress up myself, nobody saw that side of me. When I didn't have a photographer come in to do pictures before coming on stage, and I didn't have hairstylist or makeup artist, then nobody, the only person that saw that was my PA. Mm -hmm. But now, my makeup artist would know. Uh, a photographer would force a smile out of me, and it doesn't really come. <laughs> and um, my sister, who is in the US, and she's coming down this year, um, is the one on the phone with me, making sure the hair is good, the makeup is good, this is that. <laughs> she sees that. And then my husband, who will pop in and out, when he's here, he will only come out, come to meet me when I'm just about to go on stage. Other than that, then the whole team will come to make sure I'm okay when everything is done. But if not, yes, I'm sitting there just praying. At that time, you don't even have the right words. You're like, Erade Boami, Erade Kamehu. Well, that'll be all for Showbiz here on Joy News today. There's more Showbiz News in our subsequent bulletins also on myjournal.com. My name is Becky. World News is up next. I don't think it'll stop for me because it's still a journey and I see the co-founders who inspired me, the likes of Mr. Kodrenchi, the likes of Amachi Dede, the likes of Mr. Reggie Rockstone, brothers that I started with still keeping the game up to date. I think I owe it to my brother Ronnie not to let this die, live up to the legacy that he left with me and inspire the young ones. I understand I'm growing, but then I don't let the age get to me because, you know what I'm saying, I'm constantly working my way to a healthy lifestyle, eat good, I work out when I can. Yeah. It's really frustrating here in New York, so the least chance I get, I make sure I work out just to keep up, you know what I mean? But music.
Uh, before we go uh, to some world news, and a death toll from the Turkey Syria earthquake is nearing 44,000. Turkish authorities say at least 38,044 people have been killed in the country. The Syrian government and the United Nations say more than 5,800 people have died there. The UN has launched an appeal for $1 billion in aid to help earthquake victims in Turkey. Rescuers are also continuing to find survivors. Two men have been found after 260 hours trapped in a collapsed building in Antarctica in uh, Turkey. And that's how we conclude the bulletin for you. For you. There is more news on myjoyonline.com. But remember that uh, news file will be coming up for you tomorrow, Saturday. And uh, the issues to be looked at will include Boko, Boils, de-escalating to end the bloodbath, debt exchange, controversy plagued, yet done and dusted. That's a question that uh, lawyer uh, Samson Ladi Ayanini will be asking his guest tomorrow. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Do enjoy the rest of our bulletin. Good afternoon.